特别讨论一下道奇对上洛基的大逆转，提奥斯卡·赫南德斯贡献关键的三分炮，大股相平，同时也展现火力，可以说是双喜临门。但要说到国联目前最火烫的球队，绝对绝对不能够忘记打独会。这一战击退游击兵之后，最近收下了一波七连胜。马上来听听看他们有什么妙招。大棒一挥，静静看着小白球飞飞飞，挑战球场最远的中外野大强也没有问题。道奇球星大谷翔平在面对洛基的比赛，轰出一发四百七十六英尺远的阳春炮。这是大联盟本季至今最远的全垒打，连哀鸿的苦主阿辛冈布尔也只能佩服。大谷本季第二十轰打阵是史上首位连四个球季敲出二十支以上全垒打的日籍球员，但要谈起道奇这场逆转胜的关键人物，却不是奥塔尼桑。七局打完还落后五分的蓝帽军，九局上狂灌七分，当中接在 Jason Hayward 满灌炮之后 t i a s k e r Hernandez 击出的这发超前三分弹可是价值连城。We know that we're capable. You know,、uh, we're gonna fight until the last out. That's what we did today, and uh, uh, thank God we got the win. It's in the moment. I, I enjoy it、uh, when my team、uh, needs me the most, and I, I deliver. 赢球后拉出一波三连胜，让道奇继续稳坐国联西区龙头，领先第二名响尾蛇的胜差来到九场。不过近况最火烫的国联球队另有其人，那就是大都会。梅子军在 Pit Alonso 制胜安打带动下击败卫冕军游击兵，逃出晋级七连胜。Honestly, I just think we're just having super high quality at bats up and down the lineup, and um, we're we're not giving any any、uh, any easy outs away, and I, I think we're we're doing a great job of staying good, disciplined. Yeah. I think it's special, you know. I I love the way the guys are are playing right now. I love the way they're responding to adversity.、Um, every bit of us could have just rolled over and been like, "Well, we're playing good baseball right now." 除了北极熊是赢球功臣，大都会这场包括 Brandon Nimmo, Mark Bientos 都有开轰贡献。七连胜期间累积十三支红不让，五十分打点，三成一四打击率，点九二零的 OPS 都是全国联最佳。目前也只差半场胜差就能挤进外卡。看来挥别开机的低潮后，本季的梅子军还是大有可为。我来听台这么多报道。好看完了精彩的比赛，接下来要转换一下心情，关心一个比较沉重的消息，那就是大联盟名人堂球星 Willie Mays 生涯敲出过六百六十发全垒打，而他在十九号是离开人世，享年九十三岁。好，那作为大联盟最知名的上古神兽之一 ，Mace 不止厉害的不只有他的重炮，另外还有他对于棒球运动的影响力。一起来听听看这位传奇的生涯故事。Willie's memories in baseball go back practically to the day he was born. He grew up in this home just outside of Birmingham, Alabama. Michael, is this the neighborhood? Oh my God! Yes, we are here in Fairfield, Alabama. Can you feel it? I can feel it. I can feel it. Jake, this is Alabama, bro. This is, and you can, like you said, you can feel it. Seeing here where Willie grew up, this field here commemorating that, getting to walk on the field, seeing the bases drawn. What was the first thoughts? Thinking, I know they named this Willie Mays Park. He went to high school not too far from here. What's it feel like for you? The first thoughts that come to mind is all these children that live in this neighborhood right here, and who's the next? And, and, and do they know that? And do they are they going to have that opportunity? And, and for me, that's what this is about: telling this story that hey, right from this neighborhood come the best ball player we've ever seen. Why not you? It doesn't have to be baseball, yeah, yeah, but you、yeah. can make it right out of here and go do anything you want. Sir,、sure. you know, and that, that's the importance of the stuff we're doing. You have to tell the stories. So now we got to tell Willie's story to that next generation of, of fans, and that's why we're here. So tell us a little bit about the struggle for Willie to get out of this area to become who he became. I can't even imagine what what it what it took, and and they did it in stride, you know, it, the everyday manner, just resilience and achievement. This neighborhood's also very interesting because you will find people that were born in their home and they're still here. So when you talk to them. And they refer to the 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 way they interacted ba- back in the day. You can see that that was how they stimulated their growth. They all supported one another. I got to know Willie through a number of years, but I didn't spend time with him every day. Your relationship with Willie is like special, second to none. Well, I think the Alabama connection re- really drove it home when I, I got to. 
get traded out to San Francisco. And Willie was in the clubhouse, you know, almost every day of a homestand. What did you guys talk about? Oh, we talked about everything. You know, <laughs> honestly, um, well, you know, the older somebody gets, um, you know, they just want to talk and they want to share with you. You know, Willie's eyesight, you know, by the time I got there, it was tough. I'd have to get right up in. We'd almost kiss him, you know, sometimes he'd want to see me. or see. Me. But, but he, he, he got to know my voice when I'd walk in the room. And it uh, when somebody's eyesight's not the best, they really lock in on what people say in their voice so there was this one day in, in 2014 my grandpa came out and he's from 15 minutes just up the road a place called Empire Alabama yeah. they certainly uh, had probably not a whole lot in common being segregated upbringings back then but listening to these guys talk about this area about the 1930s and the 1940s and and watching white and black put all that stuff aside not care anything about that and just how far they had come and then my grandpa had just lost my grandma, and he wasn't in the best of health. That night, Willie heard me lean over to Mike Murphy, the longtime uh, clubhouse manager in San Francisco, and I, I said, hey, my papa's going to need a jacket. Can you go grab my jacket out of my locker? I'm going to send him up to the stands with one. Willie heard me say that, and Willie took his jacket off and said, Papa, I want you to have this jacket. And, and uh, from the time my grandpa left that clubhouse with that jacket on, if it was cold outside, he had that jacket on for the, about the remainder of his life. And what that did for him, Michael, um, to come back to Alabama with a Willie Mays jacket to talk about he was now friends with Willie, it truly extended and gave my grandpa so much joy in the, the latter years of his life. And it indebted me to, to Willie and your family in a way that I, I can never describe. The other part of Willie is, don't be mistaken, he knew how great a player he was too, and he'll tell you. <laughs> and if you don't have your facts right, he gonna set you straight. One of the greatest stories Willie talks to me, and, it, and it's a prideful thing for him because I know that he did it. He was standing center and called the pitches when he was with the Giants teams that were running to the pennant race. He, he would do that from center field. And he will let you know, I know way more than just about hitting. I can pitch, I can call games, I can set it up, I can do all that stuff. The best players in the world have that edge. They know they're the best. They also have this humility and this pay it forward. And that's what Willie does both. Willie was the best. But then also when you get there and you can treat people the way you, you need to and continue to do it throughout his life. He played in 24 All-Star games, four World Series, and he won 11 gold gloves for his electrifying play in center field. The Giants 